In 1880, silver was not yet king in the Furnace Hills. But rumor that the Apache Indians used silver bullets in their rifles was widespread, and certain interests were clamoring for the territory to be thrown open to the white man for development and exploitation. Tension was gathering, and supplies and reinforcements were en route to the hard-pressed garrison at Old Fort Furnace Creek. The route to Fort Furnace Creek lay through territory dominated by Little Dog, as ruthless and shrewd a fighter as his master, Old Geronimo himself. Captain Walsh, sir. What is it? Dispatch from Fort Putnam. Trouble, Cap? Inform General Blackwell his orders will be carried out. That's all. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Ramsey! <coughs> yes, sir. We're to proceed to Lordsburg immediately. The wagon train will continue on to Fort Furnace Creek. Without escort? Those are my orders. But you can't leave us here unprotected. Them hills are swarming with Apache. We haven't seen any. You don't ever see them until it's too late. Give an Apache a blade of grass to hide behind, you'll have an arrow in your gullet before you know he's within 10 miles of you. I can't understand such an order, sir. Give the command. Yes, sir. Army or no army, I'm responsible for this outfit. You go to Lordsburg, we go with you. We couldn't wait for you. The orders say with all possible speed. That's not an order, that's a death warrant. I'm sorry. I've no choice. Forward! Go! The massacre at Fort Furnace Creek aroused both Congress and the nation. The Apache were driven out and the territory was thrown open. Boom towns sprang up overnight in the newly expropriated territory. In a matter of months, 10,000 settlers, miners, and merchants poured into the Furnace Hills. The largest of these mushroom towns was Furnace Creek. 
Meanwhile, an investigation of the massacre was being held at Fort Leavenworth, resulting in court-martial proceedings against General Fletcher Blackwell, who was charged with sending the order that recalled the cavalry escort. Captain Walsh, you've already testified that the wagon master showed deep concern at General Blackwell's order. Exactly how did he express himself? First, he said that he would refuse to continue with the trip if we left him without escort. I advised him that I had to obey my orders. What did he say then? He said it wasn't an order, it was a death warrant. Were you of the same opinion? Do I have to answer? That's all. Captain Steele, do you also wish to re-examine the witness for the defense? Yes, sir. Captain Walsh, you have requested permission to resign from the Army? I have. Why? General Blackwell was my commanding officer. I always looked up to him. When this happened, I, I lost heart for the Army. You testified that after you showed the order to Lieutenant Ramsey, you placed it in one of your saddlebags, and that your mount, along with several others, was stampeded by raiding Apaches during evening mess, and the order was lost. That is right. May I draw the attention of the court, sir, of the rather odd circumstance of the Apache conveniently running off the witness's horse? Objection, sir. Such inferences are improper, Captain Steele. The court will disregard them. Strike them from the record. That is all. Excuse. Yes, sir. This way, sir. How does it look, Captain? Your father hasn't testified yet. Will you understand? Yes. Well, surely you don't believe the general sent that order. I can only testify as to facts. But you served under him. You know the sort of a man he is. I'm sorry, Captain. Very sorry. Have you any more witnesses, Captain Steele? Yes, sir. I call one more. I call General Fletcher Blackwell. Raise your right hand. Do you swear the evidence that you shall give in the case now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. General Blackwell, did you dispatch the order in question to Captain Walsh? I did not. What then was the nature of the order you did send to him? After Captain Walsh left headquarters, I learned that Little Dog was in the vicinity of Fort Furnace Creek in greater strength than I had supposed. My dispatch to Captain Walsh informed him of the situation there and reiterated my previous order to make all possible speed to Fort Furnace Creek. Have you any knowledge of the order Captain Walsh testified he received? None whatever. Your witness. General Blackwell, two years ago you commanded an expedition into the Furnace Hills. I did. What was the purpose of the expedition? It was a peace mission. Some of the Indians were going off the reservation. We hoped to restore the friendly relations that had existed between the tribe and ourselves. Did you succeed? My official report is available to you. I've already read your official report, General, very carefully. Frankly, I'm a bit puzzled by it. Not by what it says, because it covers the Indian situation very thoroughly, but by what it does not say. Isn't it true, General, that while you were in the Furnace Hills, you discovered one of the richest silver loads in the Western Hemisphere? You'll answer the question, General Blackwell. Yes. I found the Furnace Hills to be rich in silver. Why didn't you say so in your official report? It's an old story. We make a treaty with an Indian tribe, seed lands to them forever. The lands are then found to be rich in mineral deposits, or valuable for colonization, so the treaty's broken, the tribe is driven off. I knew this had eventually happened in the Furnace Hills, and I wanted no part in it. Uh, tell the court, please, was that your only motive? It was. Do you have any interest or shares in a corporation known as the Furnace Creek Mining and Development Syndicate? I have not. 
Are you aware of the fact that this syndicate has established claims and mining interests in the newly opened territory? No, I am not. These records establish the fact that many of these mineral claims were already in operation the day after the territory was opened. Thus clearly indicating that the syndicate had known in advance of these mineral deposits. Would you care to examine them? I would not. I know nothing whatever of the matter. Of course, these mineral deposits were of no value to the syndicate or anyone else, as long as the territory remained closed. Thus it was possible to assume that if the Apache could be provoked into wiping out an unescorted wagon train, then destroying the garrison at Fort Furnace Creek, the massacre would inevitably lead to the ousting of the Indians and opening of the territory. I object. General Blackwell has testified he did not write the order to recall the escort. Objection sustained. General Blackwell, could you please tell the court the names of your immediate relatives? Mrs. Blackwell is dead. I have two sons. Captain Ruth Blackwell, United States Artillery. Cash Blackwell, not in the service. Could it be possible that either of your sons has a share or interest in the Furnace Creek Mining and Development Syndicate? No. Captain Blackwell is instructing in tactics at West Point. He has no interest other than his career as an officer. And your other son? I have not seen or communicated with him for some time. For how long? A number of years. I resent this effort to indicate that members of my family are involved in this despicable affair. It's contrary to all proceeding. Strange you haven't heard from your brother. What's strange about that? I know he and the general had a falling out, but at a time like this, one would think... Cash never knew the meaning of family loyalty. Oh, I'm not defending him, Ruth. It's just that I'd I... I'd rather not discuss it. Captain Blackwell, will you come in, please? Your father's had an attack. Hey, uh, your name is Blackwell, ain't it? It is. You any relation to uh, General Fletcher Blackwell? Not that I know of. Why? He just died. Lucky for him, he did. Or they'd have probably hung him. Well, I'll go and see if they've decided what to do with you yet. You're a free man, Mr. Blackwell. Hey! Marshal says you was right after all. That was a mark, Dick. Here's your gun, sir. Thanks. Thank the Marshal for me. It says here, the transcript of court-martial testimony can be made available to interested persons by applying to the Judge Advocate General's Office, War Department, Washington, D.C. Good. I'd like to file an application immediately. What's the case in question? The court-martial of General Fletcher Blackwell. I'm trying to locate a retired Army officer. Western Command? Yes. Recently retired? Very recently. Well, we ought to have a file on him, then. Name and rank. Grover A. Walsh, Captain, Cavalry, 6th Regiment. Captain Walsh did live here. He moved about a month ago. Poor man. 
Why do you say that? Oh, I just meant it was a shame to see a gentleman like him drinking so heavy. Do you know where he moved to? Didn't say what town, just mentioned something about the new territory. Thanks. That helps some. Nice and cool here. Send a while. Thanks. Jones, the name Peaceful Jones. Tex Cameron. From Texas? That's right. Never met a fellow yet from Texas they didn't call Tex. <laughs> State law. State law. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> State law. Did they put you here often? Just Saturday night. Took six of them to do it this time. <laughs> no calaboose in town? They're building one. You're going to be mighty lonesome Sundays when they get it finished. You stand here? Maybe. Looking for a job? Depends on what it is. Too bad you ain't a team strike. It's your used one. How do you know I'm not? With them hands? Hands tell a lot about a fella. Now, I'd peg you for a city man or gambler. Or maybe a gunman. Hot, ain't it? Yeah. Saturday night sure make you thirsty Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad the town's all closed up. I could bring you a drink. Oh, it ain't closed that tight. You don't have to trouble yourself bringing it. I'll go with you. How about this hardware you're wearing? Don't you worry about that. this often? Just on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Hi, peaceful. Hi, Joe. Whiskey. Same. How come this place is open? I thought everything was sewed up on Sundays. Belongs to Syndicate, like the hotel. Mr. Lever don't like sin on Sundays. But if you gotta have it, he figures you better have it in his place. <laughs> Whiskey, Joe. I'll pay you tomorrow. Cash on the line, Captain. Orders. Well, I left my wallet in my room. Surely you can... I said it was orders. If you want them changed, see the man who makes them. Join us, Captain. Another glass, Joe. Oh, thanks, Mr. Cameron. Walsh is my name. I knew a lot of officers down in Laredo. Ever stationed in Texas, Captain? No. Cap was with the six, weren't you? Yeah. Famous outfit. You must have been proud of it. To the sixth cavalry, sir. I'd like to reciprocate, but unfortunately, I left my wallet. In my You'll room. have plenty of time, Captain. I'm going to be here for quite a spell. Coming, peaceful. So long, Joe. See you, Cap. Bring that bottle back. I didn't say I was through. I told you twice already. Your I can't... job is to serve the customers. Do it. Where did you get a $10 gold piece? See you later, peaceful. Remind me, Tex, I owe you one next payday.
You're starting a little early, aren't you? Well, what if I am? It's bad for your health. You ought to pull yourself together, Walsh. Well, don't worry about me. I'm not, but Mr. Leverett might. Maybe a little worry will do him good. <laughs> you want me to tell him that? I don't care what you tell him. in that handkerchief start shooting. I, I haven't got any card there. was planted on Captain Walsh by you. I don't usually butt in on personal matters. But Captain Walsh is my friend. I don't know who you are. I'll see you again. Well, boys, you care to go on with the game? No, thanks. It's past my bedtime. Mine, too. I'm indebted to you once again, Mr. Cameron. He figured to kill you. And this would have made it look right. Why? I don't know. Better be giving it some thought. I may not be around the next time. I haven't done anything to anybody. He just lost his head. You sure of that? I don't know what you mean. Suit yourself. But after this, you better keep your door locked. Don't go out nights. If you'll excuse me. Your chips. You better cash them in. Yeah. Mr. Shanks wants to see you upstairs, room five. That's very nice of him, but uh, who's Mr. Shanks? He runs this place for Mr. Lever. I'll go right up. What are the blues worth? A dollar. You owe me ten. Gun. Come in. Mr. Cameron, come on in. Sit down. You're a stranger in town, ain't you? Just got in this morning. Yeah, and into mischief right away. 
Mr. Leverett don't like gun smoke. There's been too much of it hereabouts. This fellow is figuring to kill a man. You looking for a job? Maybe. Fast on the draw? Fast enough. Draw, Mr. Cameron. It's kind of risky business, Mr. Shanks. Just a friendly test of speed. When I bring my gun out, Mr. Shanks, I bring it out shooting. Just an old habit of mine. However, if you don't mind, I don't. <laughs> Forget it. You're hired. To do what? To keep the peace for Mr. Leverett. Two fifty a month. <laughs> I blow a fellow's hand away and you offer me a job. How come? When a man can knock the knuckles off a moving hand at ten paces, I want him on Mr. Leverett's side. I see. I'm to be sort of a bodyguard, is that it? That's it. All right. I'll give it a try. Fine. You're on the payroll, starting now. Uh, Mr. Cameron, you play dominoes? I'm a wizard. Well, we must have us a game. Can you show me the way to Fort Furnace Creek? Yes, yeah, you go south along the valley, seven or eight miles, and then turn west and hit the old wagon road. Thanks. Someone who belonged to you? My pa. Bill Baxter. I've heard that name. Maybe you saw him fight. Yeah, that's right. Dodge City. He went 48 rounds, bare knuckles, with a fellow named... Uh... Cassidy. Corporal Cassidy. Yeah. I'll never forget that day. They stood me in a cracker barrel so I could see. The corporal was built of boilerplate, pa said. And every time pa walloped him, he clanged like a dinner bell. <laughs> It was a good fight. Kind my old man liked. Did you know him? No, I wish I had. Oh, you'd have been crazy about him. Everybody was. I'm Molly. Tex Cameron. You got somebody buried here, too? No, not here. I just rode out to see the fort. Oh, I thought maybe you had. I guess I'd better be getting back to town. Mind if I walk back to your buckboard with you? Please do. Come out here often? 
That's why I moved out here from Kansas City. So I could visit Pa's grave. From the looks of that fort, the garrison didn't have much of a chance. I hope it's never rebuilt. I hope it's left just the way it is, always. With the broken arrows and the guns I never got to fire. That sounds like a strange hope. Not at all. I never want to forget what happened there. And that there's somebody still living who shouldn't be. I don't follow you. It took more than one man to dig Pa's grave. I've thought about it a thousand times. About that General Blackwell and why he sold out his own men. How do you know he did? Somebody must have paid him to send that order. Anyone special in mind? Who profited? Ask yourself that. You forget I'm a stranger here. You'll learn. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting this doesn't mean anything to strangers. Let's talk about something else. All right. Let's talk about you. What else do you do around here? I work at the shack in town. The shack? Pop Murphy's place. Mulligan stew and apple pie. That's us. Homemade? I make the pie. Pop won't let anybody touch that mulligan. That's his specialty. <laughs> Well, it looks like you got a new customer. Now that you know all about me, what about you? What do you do? Oh, nothing in particular. You might say I'm sort of a jack of all trades. I guess I've tried about everything. Go on. Well, before I came out here, I worked on a riverboat on the Mississippi. The river's beautiful, especially at night. But it's not as beautiful as this. There's something lonely in quiet about the desert country. I like it. Are you going to stay in Furnace? For a while. Good. I mean, Pop will be delighted to get a new customer. I liked it better the first time. Where I eat the best food in town, huh? Nothing less. I'll run the team down the stable for you. Well, thanks. Come on. Oops. <laughs> Hiya, Pop. I brought you a new customer. Meet Mr. Cameron. This is Pop. Howdy, Pop. Always glad to meet a new customer. Funny, ever since Molly came to work for me, more young fellows get to hanker for my Molly. <laughs> oh, that's what I like about you, Pop. Right to the point. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Pop. Bye, Molly. Bye. Sparkin? Don't be foolish, Pop. I just met him an hour ago. <laughs> an hour is an awful long time when you're sitting on a hot stove. <laughs> oh. What do you mean every seat's taken? The stage is never full going out of here. It is tonight. Well, let me see the list. Sorry, Captain, no seats. But look, I... I said no seats. Buy that horse. He's already sold. I'll give you 40. I just told you. 50. You, you must be hard of hearing. Morning, Captain. Good morning. Wonderful weather. Makes a man glad to be alive. I was just going down to buy a new bridle from a horse. Great little horse, that. Not much to look at, but he can go all day long. You wouldn't like to sell him, would you? Well, I hadn't thought of it. I'd take good care of him. I used to be in the cavalry, you know. Yes, I, I know. If it's a question of money... Sorry, Captain. But I'm afraid your money isn't any good around here today. Look, Mr. Cameron, you can help me. Nobody need know. You could say I stole the horse. I know what I could say. The point is, why should I? I guess there's no reason except that I'll be killed if you don't. I don't sign any blank checks, Captain, for anybody. But I'll make you a deal. Tell me why you're in trouble and maybe I'll help you. Wouldn't interest you. Suit yourself, Captain. I'll see you around. Now, why do you want to know? It doesn't concern you. Why it concerns me is my business. Your business is saving your life. 
If that's what you want, write it all down in black and white, and I'll see that you get out of town in one piece. Well, I couldn't do that. I... Why not? Who are you protecting? It isn't that. It's just that I... Figure it all out, Captain. You couldn't possibly be in a worse fix than you are. All right. I'll tell you. Mr. Leverage, it's glad to have you back. Glad to be back, Shanks. Hi, oh, there. Yeah. How's everything? Fine, everything's fine. Good. Hello, Joe. Mr. Leverett? Well, what happened to your hand, Bird? A little accident, Mr. Leverett. Nothing important. That's I've bad. got those reports ready for you. So that's Leverett. Yeah. Well, Captain, what about... I'll have to think it over first. I'll let you know later. Thanks, Ortega. Yes, sir. I've got all these mine reports filed according to date right here on your desk. Production records look pretty good. Never mind about that. That isn't what I came back for. Is there anything wrong? The 6th Cavalry has been ordered back here. The entire territory will be under their supervision starting day after tomorrow. What's the idea? The War Department didn't see fit to take me into their confidence. You don't suppose they're getting curious about what happened at... Shut up. That's closed. Finished. I was just wondering. Well, don't. The army will be welcome here. We have nothing to hide, nothing to fear. Remember that. Yes, sir. Except... Except what? You remember that money you told me to send a little dog? Mm-hmm. He sent it back. With this in it. This can mean only one thing. That's right. He wants your scalp. He figures we double-crossed him. <laughs> well, we did. Didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, we did. Unfortunately for him, he's in no position to do anything about it. He can't prove anything. He's a fugitive and a renegade. The army will shoot him on sight. <laughs> See what it is. I want to see Mr. Leverett. He's busy. Let him in. How are you, Captain? Sit down. No, thank you. What can I do for you? Let me go. Let... Go where? Anywhere. Just let me go away from here. I've played fair with you. I've kept my end of the bargain. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, ask him. He does. Oh, there was some trouble downstairs last night. A question about how many queens a man could hold. You tried to frame me, that's what. You wanted an excuse to have me killed, and now you won't let me get out of town. Every place I try, they've got orders, his orders, to keep me here until he can think of a good, safe way to have me killed. Easy, Captain. I don't know what went on last night, but I am here now, and I give the orders. When do you want to leave? Oh, the first stage out tonight. I, I tried to get a seat, but they You'll don't... You'll be on it. Here. Buy yourself a drink. You look like you need one. Oh, thanks, Mr. Leverett. Thanks. I guess I got a little excited. If I don't see you before you go, goodbye and good luck. Thanks. And the same to you, Mr. Leverett. What's the matter with you? Can't you carry out an order? I told you before I left he was coming apart. Well, I... I had it all rigged for last night, but something went wrong. I want him out of the way before the army moves in. And I want it to look legitimate, so there'll be no questions asked by the army or anybody. I'll get on it right away. If nothing else works, I'll, I'll take some money from the hotel safe and plant it on him. Do what you have to do, but get it over with tonight. All right. Upstairs to your left. Thank you. Hi. 
What's new? Not much so far. One out, one in. Take it easy. Howdy, Mr. Gilmore. Cash. Cameron's the name. Tex Cameron. Hi, Ruth. Well enough. And you? No better, no worse. It's been a long time yes. since. Yes. Almost six years. Sorry I couldn't get home for the funeral. We didn't count on you. Take it easy, Ruth. He was my father, too. It's a little late to be remembering that, isn't it? Sorry. What are you doing out here, Ruth? You know the answer to that as well as I do. I came here to see what I could do to clear the general's name. You're wasting your time. I've been all over it. It's ancient history out here. They're not even interested in what happened at the fort. Well, I am. And I'm interested in Captain Walsh, too. I've already talked to him. He's a weakling and a drunk. But as far as I could figure out, he told the truth at the court-martial. I'll have to decide that for myself. Well, as long as you're determined to find out for yourself, how about working together? No sense in both of us covering the same ground. Although I still think you're wasting your time. No, thanks. I'll go it alone. Any particular reason? Yes. A very particular reason. We never saw eye to eye on anything. I don't think we ever will. You walked out on us once. Let's just leave it that way. Fair enough. Now, if you don't mind, I'll make a speech. And tell you something I didn't want to tell you in the beginning. Walsh is in trouble, deep trouble. There's a couple of people in town who would be very happy to see him in a coffin on Boot Hill. I did him a big favor the other night. He's beginning to come around. Sooner or later, he'll talk if he lives. I aim to keep him alive until he does. So stay clear of him until I'm through with him and stay clear of me. Look who's coming. Uh, Pop, I think the stew's boiling over. Ain't no stew on. Well, put some on. Hello. Oh, hello. You have an extra cup of coffee handy? One cup of coffee coming up. Wish I were hungry. That apple pie sure looks good. Want some? No, thanks. Won't you join me? Oh, it's against the rules for the help to associate with the paying customer. During working hours, that is. During working hours. And after that? After that, it's up to the help and the customer. <laughs> <laughs> How about nine o'clock? Nine's fine. <laughs> peaceful. <laughs> hi, hi, Penny. Hi, Molly. Hi, Peaceful. Hello. Hey, they tell me I better stay in good with you if I want to keep healthy. Son, you sure move fast. Hit town one day, big job the next. I didn't know you had a job. Didn't he tell you? No. He's the new watchdog for the syndicate. Step on Leverett's toes and tech steps on yours. <laughs> From the way you handled Bird the other night, you won't run into no trouble. What do you have, Peaceful? Oh, I didn't come to buy, I come to pay. The fella kicked in with five bucks he owed, and I thought I'd better settle up my bill before Saturday rolls around. <laughs> well, see you later. The mules is getting lonesome. Adios, <laughs> I'll go down and see about running a buckboard for tonight. That won't be necessary. What's the matter? Your job. That's what's the matter. Well, I know it's not much of a job, but it... I wouldn't care if you swept out the gutters. That would be honest. But not this. What do you got against Mr. Lever? 
my father's grave, and all the rest of the graves out at the fort. Isn't that enough? But, Olive, you can't be sure. I told you once before that General Blackwell must have had a reason to do what he did. Who had their claims all staked out even before the territory was open? Who knew right where the silver was? Mr. Leverett, that's who. The man you're paid to look after. But you're only guessing, Molly. It's not proof. It's all the proof I need. I read what went on at that court, Marshal. If the general hadn't died, they'd have proved that he or his sons were on Leverett's payroll. Now, <laughs> just a minute. Come in, Captain. Just in time. Time for what? Have a cup of coffee with me. Good for the nerves. Nothing wrong with my nerves. <laughs> Just a figure of speech, Captain. You two know each other? Of course. If you want anything else, Captain, just yell. I'll be out and back. Well, Captain, what's the verdict? I'm sorry I bothered you this morning. Really wasn't anything to get that excited about. It was just that I was upset about the other night. Began imagining things. So they've decided to let you live a while longer. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe I can refresh your memory. I wouldn't try if I were you. It may be healthier all around to let the matter drop before somebody begins to wonder why you're so interested. Threats, Captain? Let's say a word to the wise, in gratitude for having saved my life the other night. You really think you're out of the woods, huh? I don't think we have anything further to discuss. You're in this way over your head, Walsh. You'll be needing me again. And when you do, remember the terms. Is that all you have to say? That's all. The next move is yours. Captain Walsh. My treat. Your piece of silver. Cut five. Wonder what he's doing out here. Who is he? Captain Blackwell. General Blackwell's son. You remember the general who was court martialed on account of that massacre business? You sure? Of course I'm sure. Used to be my company commander back in Fort Douglas. Your bad. Deal me out. Seen Captain Wells around here lately? Yeah, he left early tonight. Sober, too. Are you positive? The fellow said he was in his outfit at Fort Douglas. Send up that new man, uh, Tex, whatever his name is. I can handle it, Mr. Leverett. You've got your job for tonight. Go on, get him up here. Whiskey, Joe. Mr. Lebert wants to see you in his office. All right. Save it, Joe. Hey, Joe. Who is this lever? It ain't this lever, it's Mr. Lever. And he owns this place? This place and practically every place hereabouts. You ever hear of the Furnace Creek Mining and Development Syndicate? Well, he's it. The fellow you just saw, here's one of his bodyguards. Thank you, Joe. Come in. I'm Tex Cameron. Do you want to see me? Yes, come in. Sit down, Cameron. I always like to know the boys that work for me, especially the ones whose duty it is to look after my interests. Coffee? No, thanks. It's been a pretty peaceful job so far. I hope it stays that way. When the 6th Cavalry moves in the day after tomorrow, 
I'd like them to find a quiet, well-run town. Shanks didn't tell me the army was moving in. He didn't know about it either. Well, I guess you won't be needing me anymore after that. On the contrary. One of the penalties for success is that you make enemies. The man at the top is like the bullseye on a target. Everybody's after him. I wouldn't know anything about that. I've never been where you are. Mm -hmm. Well, it has its drawbacks. A lot of people hate me for a lot of reasons. With some, it's ordinary jealousy. With others, take for instance, there was a general involved in some way with that massacre out of the fort. Uh, Blackwell, his name was. Now, you may have heard of it. Yeah, I remember reading something about it. There was a great deal of bitterness at the general's court-martial. The defense claimed that he was the victim of a plot. And because I was the first one into the territory, you will hear talk that I was implicated in the affair. I never listen to small talk unless I'm paid to. Unfortunately, other people do. General Blackwell's son is here in town. Yes? I want you to keep an eye on him. Well, do you think he's here to make trouble? I don't know. That's why I want you to watch him. That shouldn't be too difficult. I'll take care of him, Mr. Leverett. Don't you want to know how to locate him? I guess that would be a good idea. <laughs> That's the trouble with you quick trigger boys. You need somebody else to do your thinking for you. <laughs> He's going under the name of Gilmore, staying here at the hotel, room 12, just down the hall. Gilmore, 12. Yes, sir. As soon as the stage leave. About a half hour. But check me off. I'll wait outside. I told you this morning you ain't on the list. Well, I must be. Mr. Leverett said he'd arrange it. You better check again. I don't have to check. I made up the list and you ain't on it. But there must be some mistake. There's no mistake.
been looking for you, Captain. good idea what you came here for. I suppose you told them. That's what you're paid for, isn't it? To look out for Mr. Leverett's interests? Remember that time when we were kids and I pulled you out of the swimming hole just as you were going down for the third time? Well, I made a big mistake. I should have let you drown. Have you seen Tex Cameron? No. Good heavens, what happened to you? A broken window, I fell. I've got to find Tex Cameron. I thought he might be here. I don't know where he is. You better let me get something for those cuts. There isn't time. Give me a piece of paper. I've got to write something down, quick. Will this do? Yes, anything. What have you got to write that's so important? You can read it when I've finished. The whole world can read it. I'll get some bandages. What's the matter? What's happening? It's Captain Wall. She's been shot. Lock the doors, Pop. Keep everybody out. His face was cut like that when he came in, looking for you. I never saw anyone so excited, just like he knew someone was after him. Where were you when he was shot? I'd gone to get some bandages. But before I left, he asked for a pen and ink. Pen and ink? Yes. Was he writing something? Yes. Well, where is it? What, what happened to what he was writing? I don't know. After I found him here, I ran to get Pop. And when I got back, just as I came into the room, I saw a man go out the side door. Who was the man? I never saw him before. All I could tell was he was about your size and wearing a dark blue shirt. I'll send somebody after him, Pop. Who did it? Is he dead? What happened? He's dead. That's all I can tell you. Open up. It's me. Looks like you're taking my advice after all. You're leaving town. Yeah. Planning on stopping me? No, but I'd like to ask you a question before you leave. Did you kill Walsh? Is he dead? You know he's dead. Let's skip the small talk. There isn't much time. All right. If it'll set your mind at ease, I didn't kill him. It was all over when I got there. You can report that to your boss. Don't be a fool. I'm here to help you. You're a trifle late. I won't be if you get rid of that shirt you're wearing. They saw you coming out of Pop Shack. I'll take care of myself. And another thing, I want that confession that Walsh wrote. If they find it on you, they'll blow your head off. Confession? I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about, the statement that Walsh wrote before he was shot. 
I thought you'd get around to that sooner or later. Well, if you want it, you'll have to take it. The rest of you come at the back of the hotel. You boys come with me. all the excitement. We thought you might need some help. I'll let you know when I do. You know who he is, don't you? Sure. His name's Blackwell. General Blackwell's son. You're right. I am. But I'm not the only son. What do you do that for? He might have said something we ought to know. He can talk all he wants in court when the army gets here. You're new around here, Cameron. A man shoots somebody in the back, he don't get a trial. He just gets hung. Come on, boys. Take it easy. Leverett hired me to look out for his interests. I don't think a necktie party would give the syndicate of the town a very good name. But if you want one, go ahead. It's your responsibility, not mine. Yours and the rest of you. Maybe we ought to let it ride. Yeah, he ain't going nowhere. Give me a hand. I want this to be a popular verdict. One that the army or nobody else can question. Bring in the judge. Come in, Your Honor. Something uh, you want me to do, Mr. Leverett? Yes, come in here. Shut the door. A fine figure of judicial authority. Now listen to me and get this straight. Do you still remember how to run a court? Uh, yes, I guess so. Uh, why? Be at Miner's Hall tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, shaved and sober. You're going to preside at a murder trial. Me? Yes, you. I'll see you before the trial, tell you just what to say and when. Now get them out of here and clean them up. Come on, Your Honor. All right, you two know your story. Yes, sir. Well, spread it around and stir up the town. And remember, I want this to be a popular verdict. Now, get out of here. Molly, I've got to talk to you. I don't think we have anything to discuss. Molly, it's important, please. Here, let me carry this. You've got to do something for me. Yes? When you testify today, I'd rather you didn't mention that Captain Walsh was writing something when he was shot. Why shouldn't I? I can't tell you the reason yet. I'm only asking you... What was he writing that was so important? I can't tell you that. It wouldn't be safe for you to know. I'll have to be the judge of that. Look, Molly. There's only one chance to save Blackwell's life. Why are you so anxious to save him? Because he didn't kill Walsh. I'm afraid that's not the right answer, Cash. So you know. Yes, Mr. Blackwell. The same papers that told about the court-martial had quite a bit to say about your family. I was looking them over again last night, and I put quite a few things together. Molly, my father had no more to do with the massacre than you did. He was framed, pure and simple. You've got to believe me and trust me. My pa used to say that when a man asks you to trust him, it's time to get out of his firing range. And if you're counting on me to help you, all I can say is you better clear out of Furnace Creek fast before there's a double hanging. Oh, 
Whoa! Hi, Tex! Hi, Peaceful. Can I give you a lift? It's slower than walking. Ha, ha, ha! Get up! Come on! <laughs> you got troubles? Yeah. Big trouble? Big as they come. There's a lot goes on around here I ain't in on. That's all right with me. I got a feeling the less I know about what's going on in this town, the better I like living here. Pretty good philosophy. Comes a time in every man's life, though, when he's either got to be an ostrich or a man. I'm thinking this is it. I ain't the smartest man in town, but they don't come no bigger. I'd take it unfriendly if you didn't cut me in on anything I could do for you. Thanks, Peaceful. I'll remember that. I want to talk to you. Explain about last night. Don't bother. What happened last night speaks for itself. Have you got the rope all ready and the tree picked out? I had to do what I did, Ruth. They would have hung you on the spot if I hadn't. Yeah, sure. You did it for my own good. And now I'll tell you why. Look, do we have to go on playing games? I know all I want to know. Now get out of here and leave me alone. I was doing all right my way until you came along. I had walls softened up beginning to break. And I gummed up the works, is that it? That's about the size of it. You're no good, Cash. You've never been any good. You can talk from now to doomsday and I believe only one thing. I'm here and you put me here. Look. Up to now, they don't know that we're related. You can go ahead and tell them if you like, but if you don't, there may still be a chance to get you out of here. Don't worry. I'm just as anxious as you are not to have anybody know we have the same name. Now get out of here. This here court will now come to order. We are here to try the defendant, uh, uh, Ruth Blackwell, for the murder of our esteemed townsman, Captain Walsh. Let's get going. First witness, Jose Artego. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Suppose you tell us just what you seen last night. Well, I was walking up the street towards Pop's place when I see this fella here start shooting at somebody inside. There were three bullet holes in his back, as neat a pattern as you ever saw. Walsh wasn't carrying no gun. At least he didn't have no holster on him. I was just going to close up when Captain Walsh came in. His face and hands were cut, so I went to get some bandages. I was in my room when I heard the shots. And when I came back, Captain Walsh was just sliding off the stool. I ran to get Pop, and when we got to the doorway, a man in a dark blue shirt was running out. That's it? Order! Order! Order in the court! Go on. Thank you. Next witness? I haven't finished yet. There's something else. Just before Captain Walsh was shot, he was writing something. I asked him what it was, and he said the whole world could see it when he was finished. What became of what he was writing? I don't know. It was in his hand when I went to get Pop. And when I came back, it was gone. Is that all? That's all. 
Well, folks, that's the size of it. This man come here under an assumed name to kill Captain Wallace, who testified at the court-martial of his father. I guess most everybody around here remembers General Blackwell, yes, the man responsible for the massacre at the fort. Yes, sir. The only question we have to decide is, can a man come to this here town, shoot one of our citizens in the back, and get away with it? Mr. Public Defender, have you anything to say for your man? I, um, I haven't had a chance to talk the situation over with my client. But uh, after hearing all this testimony, I don't see much point in trying to change the facts. The defense rests. So be it. The jury will retire and decide on the verdict. We've already decided, Your Honor. We find here... Wait a minute. You, Blackwell, stand up according to Hoyle. All right, go ahead. We find him guilty. Order! Order in the court. So be it. The sentence of this court is that the prisoner will be hanged by the neck until death. <laughs> You. Get up the stairs. Go on. Never mind this. Out the window, quick. Round up some of the boys and head south along the ridge. We'll take the back path. Right. If Walsh wrote what I think he wrote, and they get out of the territory with it, I'll kill you, so help me. Come on.
Maybe this is as good a place as any to make a stand. We could hold a few of them off, but they just send back for more help. We'd better separate. They can't follow both of us. Here, take this. Follow the stream for a way so you won't leave any sign. Then cut up over the hill. There's a town with a federal marshal about 30 miles due west. I'll cut back this way and lead them off. That's a good plan. There's only one thing wrong with it. Look, this is no time to argue. I don't want to argue. You're a gambler. We'll flip for it. Heads, you're the decoy. Tails, I am. Heads, me. Tails, you. You better get going. Wait a minute. Before you go, there's something I want to say. Forget it. Well, good luck, brother. You men follow the river. Watch out for an ambush. Come on. You heard him? Let up. went in the barracks. Good. Spread out.
Are you looking for someone? Looks like this is the end of the line. I wouldn't. You've caused me a lot of trouble, Cameron. I'd just as soon go out as Cash Blackwell, if you don't mind. So that's it. General Blackwell's other son. Well, that suits me fine and explains a lot. Where's that statement Walsh wrote? My brother's got it. You're lying. You wouldn't go to all this trouble and trust it to anybody else. Hand it over. If I do, what then? Quick bullet. Nice and clean. And if I don't? Slow way. Well, I tried. I... It's out there in the hat band. Get it. I don't think I can make it. Go on, get it. Time to go. What's your hurry? New Marshal said if I didn't stay put, he's going to get a bigger tree. <laughs> I'd sure hate to have him do that. Just when I'm getting used to this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, adios. 